All right. If you have your Bibles with you, then we'd ask you to turn to the Gospel of Luke. Uh, uh, Luke chapter 15, and we're going to begin reading in the first verse. Luke chapter 15, in the first verse, the Bible says, Then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmuring, saying, This man receiveth sinners, and, this, uh, and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth moreover, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for your word. We thank you for its fullness. We thank you that it's complete, Lord. We pray that you would meet with us tonight, Lord, as we anticipate the fellowship on Friday night, that you will be with us. Uh, Lord, we pray that you would prepare our hearts. Lord, we pray that you would prepare us as a people together, Lord, to make us ready for that day. Lord, we uh, pray for the loss that meets among us, that tonight, even tonight, would be the night that you would save them by your mercy and grace. And we pray these things in the sweet and the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Now, uh, fairly familiar verses of Scripture, uh, a lot of times Matthew's accounting of this very same thing is used more in sermon texts than Luke's gospel, uh, but the Lord really brought this to my heart this morning on my way to work, and uh, we're going to really focus on verse 7, but we're going to read all the verses that lead up to it uh, because they are uh, very important. Uh, the first verse says, Then drew near unto him all publicans and sinners. Now, uh, that was significant because the Jews were very a, a very self-righteous people. And, and, you know, sometimes I see that uh, slipping into sovereign grace churches that if you, uh, if you don't believe five points, then they're going to cast you out. If you don't have this element in the Lord's Supper, they're going to cast you out. And, uh, and instead of taking time and patience with these people, they're done with them. But I want you to see that was not the Lord Jesus' approach. He went to these two groups and he uh, spent time with them and he got to know them so that he might could share the gospel with them. Now, the first group that is uh, mentioned is a publican. Now, these individuals had a Jewish lineage, but they worked for the Roman government. And they did different jobs, tax collectors. Zacchaeus would have been known as a publican. Some of them uh, were enforcers of the law, but they were despised by their own group because they worked with the very people that occupied them and took their freedom. Uh, they were considered the lowest of the low. And, and a lot of times we can think about people like that ourselves if we're not very careful and that their position is less than ours and nothing further could be from the truth. Uh, you know, I think time and time again, that's why the Lord Jesus Christ reminds us that not one jot or tittle of the law would pass away because I don't care how good you've been, you violated the law somewhere many times over. Mm -hmm. And so that puts us on a level playing field. And uh, uh, so uh, that was the first group he brought into them. And then the second group he brought in was sinners. Now, I'm uncertain if this was sinners in light of the law, if they were Jewish people known to be active in sin, or if it was actually people who weren't Jews at all. 
because they were the worst of the worst. The Gentile people were disgusting uh, in the Jewish sight. Now, I'm not sure which uh, because I will say this. It's just a little bit of an insight, and you can study it the rest of the week. Uh, remember, the Lord said that that was not his ministry, that the Gentiles was not his ministry. Uh, and you remember when the uh, woman was begging, and she said, Yay, Lord, but uh, even the dogs eat from the crumbs from the master's table. Uh, but uh, so probably some Jews that were in real bad shape and we live in a day and age today where there are Christians in really, really bad shape. You know, until you get out of your shell of Stewart County, you don't know what it is out there. And, and we, need, we need to get out sometimes. I, I was talking to Donna about it. I, I never cease to be amazed at the homeless people, the number of homeless people in Paris. I mean, little, you know, I think the whole city has uh, 15,000 people in it. And uh, I went to Clarksville this afternoon, and very same thing, just time and time again, you see people pushing buggies around. Uh, we, you know, uh, you think, how did they get that way? Well, it started with sin, I can guarantee you that. Um, that's the role sin will take us. And never think that you're above doing that, because none of us are. So he had these two very unusual groups with them, and people took note. Uh, the Jews noticed who was there. Uh, and the Pharisees, and they were some of the Lord's biggest critics, and the Pharisees and the scribes, that were the one, those were the ones that made new copies of the law, new copies of the Jewish history all the time. And the Pharisees and the scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. Now, that was a huge, huge no-no in, in the law, which you sit at the table with sinners. Now, again, to kind of call to remembrance what was going on, remember when... Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, Mary uh, washed the feet of Jesus with her tears and dried them with her hair, uh, with the length of her hair. And the Pharisee then was thinking, if he knew what kind of woman this was, yeah. and even that man did not even follow the Jewish tradition in washing the Lord's feet when he made entry. And he reminds them of that. So I want you to see, we really need to watch our pedestal. Uh, what I have found, if I take care of myself, that's a full-time job. Yeah. And so uh, uh, we, uh, we as the Lord's people need to be more canon to what Christ did uh, instead of what we think is right. And so we begin to see that he receives immediate crit criticism. Verse 3. And he spake this parable unto them. What man of you having a hundred sheep? Now, we know this is a parable, but I want you to see that all through here, uh, he deals in specific numbers. In fact, if you follow the ministry of Christ, it was always very deliberate and very specific. How many fish did they get after the resurrection? Anybody remember? 153 and very specific very specific amount and that's why because we have a particular redemption there there is a specified number and here he teaches these people he he addresses them and, and the best known occupation as a jew as a shepherd he said this fella has 100 sheep specifically they are under his care they are uh, they are his to see to, and that's what he possessed. What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doeth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost? Mm -hmm. Now, if you uh, if you write in your Bible, underline and it's underlined in mine that which is lost. So we have we have the condition of the lost person. He's a sheep, but he's lost. Mm -hmm. He belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ, 
but he's out there somewhere. See, that's every one of us. Those of us who are genuinely redeemed, we were the lost sheep at one time in our life. And the Lord, out of his goodness and grace and mercy, came looking our way. Uh, and that's exactly the picture the Lord Jesus Christ is paying here. And he emphasizes to him it's for that mercy, that love for that one little, little lamb. That one little sheep that he left at 99 and went out searching. And uh, what a glorious miracle when you begin to think about that. Uh, uh, when you think about how, how pitiful your own self-worth is. And he did that for you. Mm -hmm. He did that for us specifically. And, and so uh, the Lord Jesus talks to them in terms that every one of them could understand in the care for, for the sheep. Notice what else he does until he finds it. Now, the Lord Jesus, the real God of this Bible, isn't trying to save, he will save. If he's dealing with you tonight, he'll complete the work. It may not, it may not be tonight, it may not be tomorrow night, but listen, you know what? Uh, oh, oh, <laughs> Uh, Nicodemus he wasn't never the same after hearing a simple statement you must be born again mm -hmm. now he didn't get saved that night but he just couldn't get away from it and you know why the Lord was wooing him and pulling unto himself and that's exactly the kind of shepherd we serve he will pull you unto himself he'll go in the deepest dark place to get those that belong to him every time, every time. And so we see that he makes this illustration for them. Verse 5, when he had found it, he layeth it on his shoulders rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he called together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. Now, uh, uh, the next verse we're going to read is the glorious one. It says there's joy in heaven over one sinner right. that repented. Uh, you know, uh, it, it, don't make, uh, it don't make a bump in the road here in this wicked, ungodly world where we're pilgrims and strangers. But if the Lord would see fit in his mercy and grace tonight to save one of his own, to draw that lost sheep to himself... Uh, there's a party going on in heaven. See, it's a glorious and wonderful thing uh, for redemption to occur. And, and so, and, uh, in verse 7, he says, I say unto you that likewise, just like this, this illustration that I just give you, that, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one center, sinner that repenteth. Now, I, want, I think it's very important that uh, we mark the word repenteth. Now, that's the, that's the word that is left out on the Romans Road and on the Southern Baptist ABC and all that little gimmicks that they've got going in the modern day. But what was the first sermon of John the Baptist topic on? Repentance. Yeah. What was the first sermon of our Lord Jesus Christ that he preached? What was the subject? Repentance. And here we find that the joy in heaven is a sinner repent, repenting of his sins. Now, listen, th this is the reality of that. You cannot be uh, repentant of sin if you're not aware of sin. And you can't be aware of sin if you've never been, been born again to start with. <coughs> So, <coughs> repentance is the first fruit of salvation. You will repent over the condition you previously lived. And so we see that the story, uh, the parable, is all too clear that what we need 
is to be kind to others. You'll, you'll, never, you'll never gain much being mean about what you believe. And listen, I'll be the first one to say, <laughs> we have the truth. It's a treasure. I believe the Bible says it's a treasure. <laughs> Was it the Lord Jesus saying to John, uh, uh, saying to Peter, a treasure in earthen vessels? But don't become a, bit, a Baptist Pharisee. Be, be patient with these people. Be kind with these people. Pray for these people. And the Lord, out of His goodness and mercy, uh, just may open their hearts to the, the condition in which they live. Uh, don't ever, ever uh, begin to think uh, that you're better than another individual because it, it just isn't so. And we're much more <laughs> wicked than we really think. <laughs>